Good morning, everybody. Hi. Um, welcome to Grindstone Island United Methodist Church. Church, of course, as we all know, is everywhere you go. But we have this little structure that we do on Sundays. And we gather here to remind each other that we're a family together. Every person on this island, every person in Jefferson County, every person in this country, in this world, we're one family, which is hard to believe. That's why we get together and remind ourselves that we all belong to each other. It's a, it's a thing we forget all the time. So amen, we remember that today. Today's a, um, today's a sad day. Why? I'm leaving tomorrow. But the thing about faith is, is combining what's sad with what's joyful. And today is also a great day because I'm still on this beautiful island. Um, so let's, let's um, celebrate the difficult things that life throws at us because they're couched in the beautiful things that life offers us. And you know, that is why we pay attention to this thing we call God. Because God you know, offers us this, this understanding of what's true and joyful and, and positive. Yeah, preach it back there. So hopefully you have access to one of these. So let's start our worship with um, this call to worship. O oh Lord, who may abide in your presence and dwell in your holy house? Let us walk blamelessly and do what is right. Let us speak the truth from our heart. Lead us in ways which prevent slander in our speech. Guide us away from demeaning our friends or shaming our neighbors. May we always honor the way of the Lord. May we stand by the values of God, even if it means personal sacrifice. Nurture us, encourage us as we worship you. Let's pray together. God, visit us. We do our best to open our hearts to you. Sometimes we get a little distracted. Sometimes we're pretty busy. But give us the grace in this time together to settle our minds, to open our hearts, to allow your voice, your spirit to mingle in our very midst. Teach us how to love one another. Teach us your way, your mysterious way of forgiveness and reconciliation and healing so that we all might be drawn together into your family for real. We pray it in the strong name of Jesus our Lord. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Um, mission. Hey, Doreen. Uh, our mission is what we're all about, right, Mary? Yeah. Jeremy, put this mic way up high. You can tilt it down. Okay. Can you hear me? We're, I'm going to pause for a minute before we pass the basket so you can open your wallets first. <laughs> um, the, the plea this week is again with um, Ministry of Hope. And uh, they work in Malawi, Africa, at orphan feeding centers, and they help students with scholarships for school. Um, I feel particularly blessed because I've worked with this organization since 2010 when my husband and I lived in Malawi. It's called the Warm Heart of Africa because of the kindness of the people. And one thing that we learned when we lived there among the families that earn less than $2 a day was that they're there for each other, for sickness and in health. If they didn't have food, the neighbor would help. If you were sick, 
someone would help get you to medical care. So um, I want to continue to support them um, because their work is so important. And uh, the last trip I went in June, when we saw 666 patients, over 150 were positive for malaria, mm -hmm. and we were able to give the medicine and save lives. Mm -hmm. So any, anything helps. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Mary. And thank you for, for bringing the witness of this church all the way over there to Malawi. Mary, thank you for that gift. <laughs> Introductions, announcements. There can't possibly be as many events this week as there have been. Yeah, Lynn, except for one. I yeah, know one. So, um, this coming weekend, 6, 7, 8, is the International Piano Competition. Uh, These are young people who are studying to be concert pianists. We have three college professors that come and judge for the performances. They play for two and a half days, and uh, you're going to a concert. Yes. Yeah. And there's no charge unless you want a program, and it's a dollar. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. You're welcome to come if you've never been. How many of you have actually been before? Yeah. What did you think? To me. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, and thank you, Lynn, for that. It's, it's an amazing event yeah. with amazing young people yeah. doing amazing things on, on those keyboards. Other uh, announcements, introductions? Clay? Yeah, we have Cheryl Campbell. Please. Cheryl, my neighbor. <laughs> yeah. Welcome, Cheryl. It's so good to see you. Uh, Clay. Yeah, I'd like to uh, welcome my sister and brother-in-law back to the island. They haven't been here for seven years. Karen Pickett is taking it. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Lynn? Uh, next to me is Sylvia Houston. She's a guest, and she's been here many times before. <laughs> 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 uh -huh. She's on the back on the island now. So. Welcome, Sylvia. Uh, Karen? Oh, is that right? Art and Jerry Couch are celebrating their 63rd wedding. Oh, yeah. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. 63, you can almost retire. No, 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 no that's not right. John. I'd like to uh, introduce my friend Phil, who's not here. <laughs> construction vehicles keep swinging <laughs> by. Yeah, I hope that's going well. We're excited to have you in the neighborhood. So welcome. Uh, Roxy and Yeah, I just wanted to, an actual announcement. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the last one for the year, woo -hoo. Uh, The museum is officially closed now for the season. And I just want to thank everybody who came this year and supported it. Um, our new exhibit was wonderful and it was well supported and um, we will see you beginning of June next year. Mm. Thank you. Yes, and thank you, Roxanne. It's a labor of love to have that, first of all, you know, constructed and built and open to the public and then, you know, supply it with these amazing exhibits. It's very meaningful, and thanks to you and the whole committee for making that happen. 
Charlie. Uh, well, uh, in uh, September, I we go ahead with our uh, services, uh, and um, we, uh, I'm always interested in getting songs that people like to hear. So if you let us let, let me know, and I know what kind of hymns you enjoy, then you can do them. So uh, after the service today, you can write them down if you can shout out the name of the <laughs> Good. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. Thanks to Charlie and the Art for continuing our worship season into September. Other thoughts? Well, let's um, let's stand and sing. So this this is a hymn that is a little more upbeat, right, Joan? So it's on the keyboard. So one five zero, God who stretched the spangled heavens. a little bit if you if you notice I don't know if you notice every Sunday on the on the front there's a that's the theme of the service so the theme today is what a, a religion of doing you know how do we, how, how do we translate um, words and there are a lot of words you know as you know in these services but how does that how does that become what we do how does who we are translate into what kind of engagement proceeds from us? So we're gonna we're gonna reflect on that, and I've asked H. G. Wells. anybody know that name? <laughs> Often called the father of science fiction, uh, War of the Worlds. Uh, these are old books. This is like the 1890s. Uh, Time Machine. Uh, but a man of faith. So let's um, join with H.G. Wells in prayer to our God. Let us pray. O oh God, our leader and our master and our friend, forgive our imperfections and our little motives. Take us and make us one with your great purpose. Use us and do not reject us. Make us all servants of your kingdom. Leave our lives into your struggle to conquer and to bring peace and union to the world. We are small and feeble creatures. We are feeble in speech, feeble still in action. Nevertheless, only let your light fall upon us, and there is not one of us who cannot be lit by your fire, and who cannot lose himself in your salvation. Take us into your purposes, O God. Let your kingdom come to our hearts and into our world.
Amen. So, uh, as you know, our, the way we do act in the world um, is met with fatigue often and lack of creativity and we run out of gas in order to, to fulfill this commandment to love one another and to be present to one another and to understand the suffering that goes on around us. And God knows that we are finite creatures and that we don't have infinite energy or infinite creativity. Um, so God's job is to supply us with hope of becoming more fulfilled human beings and to draw us into more fully the life of love. Um, even in the midst of our failure, we rejoice that God is with us, drawing us into a more complete human form. So um, that's our celebration. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I see my light come shining from the west down to the east. Any day now, any day now, I shall be Taylor thought this is a cool song, Let the Mystery Be, uh, which is an interesting thing to think about. This is the land of mystery that we're dealing with, love, God, faith, what's it all about, how do we enter it? Um, so we thought it'd be fun to do it again with Eliza, but she wasn't able to make it. So instead, we have this awesome song that Jeremy Taylor has uh, crafted and sung and you may have heard it before, um, but we're really glad to uh, to let it ring again. Thank you. This is a song about a big old orange life jacket, and, and, there's, and you can help me with one part of it. When I say "tie me around," you can say "tie me around." All right? Yeah, you can follow me on that. <laughs> when the river gets rough and the water gets cold, when you get off course and your boat hits a shore, reach out for me if you start to go down. Together we'll flow right out the storm. I'll be your life jacket. Time you run. I'll hold you up when you get pulled down. I'll be your life jacket. Bright colored on. Put your arms through me. Time you run. gets me and put you down cause you stand on the higher ground I'll stand by you lend advice consider me your flotation device I'll be your life jacket
gets heavy and your knees get weak when you lose the strength and sink in deep. No matter what, you can count on me. funny how things happen. Um, you know, the theme of the song is, what do we do? How do we turn faith into action? Be a life jacket. Yeah. You know, turn me around. Make everything safe for somebody else. So, Jeremy, thank you for that. Um, so, scripture time. Let's see, Deb, quick end. Good morning. Good morning. All I can say is every one of you have to, has done something to be here today. And for some of you, it's been more of an effort than for others. And for all of you, I say, thank you for coming. It's yes. wonderful. And so the doing is one of the things that we do an excellent job of, I think, here on the island. The reading is from James, for <clears throat> chapter 1, verses 17 to 27. Every generous act of giving, with every perfect gift, is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would come, become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourself of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the world, word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and on going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty and persevere, being not heroes, hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Great lessons in that, boy. Mm -hmm. The New Testament's from Mark 7, 1 through 8. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. 
For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and many kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? And he said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Thank you, God. Yeah, so washing the hands, why is that such a big deal? So, I don't know, we don't know exactly, you know, what was going on in the tradition of the elders, you know, a couple thousand years ago. Uh, might have been people were dying because they weren't washing their hands. Um, but the point I like us to think about is we do have traditions that we inherit from our elders. And to what degree do those traditions match the values that God is interested in? And to what degree do those traditions, do we focus on the traditions more than the spirit of, that those traditions grew out of? So I want us to, to think about, about that as well as those, those words that Debbie read that I, I don't know, if you have time and you have a Bible, if you don't have a Bible, there's someone here, take one home. Um, James is a little tiny letter way in the back of the New Testament. But those words are really hard for us because, and, and hard for preachers, because, you know, I just talk. That's what, you know, I'm just up here talking right now. And the whole point of that text is words have one purpose. And they are to infuse us with a spirit that makes us capable or interested in or inspired to action that is um, in line with what God wants us to do. But how do we know what God wants us to do? Well, that's the thing. Like, what is it, what is at the heart of religion? And did you catch that little line at the end? Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this. So you know, James is laying it out. And James, the author of James, traditionally is understood as the brother of Jesus, who was the leader of the early church in Jerusalem when Jesus died and, and came back and then left. And then who was going to run, run the show? Well, how about Jesus' brother? So... That's our understanding of who wrote this, these words. Um, this is the pure religion, not in the tradition of what we might think, well, coming to church, that's religion, right? And we're all here, so we're all religious. But that's not what James says. Pure religion is care for orphans and widows. And that's just a symbol for who is vulnerable, who doesn't have any means of support, who's been left out, who is in need of your attention. That's pure religion. Now, um, the thing is, how do we stay focused on that? Because we are all busy people. You know, we have lives to live and, you know, like property to take care of. And I'm going to be clearing out our refrigerator later tomorrow. And um, how do we stay focused on paying attention to others' suffering? Other, what, what, 
what is what are other people involved with that need our support? What can we do to be attentive? So when that letter of James says, be quick to listen, be slow to speak. Those are powerful words. Um, I don't know, I have a friend who, um, you know, when, when her daughter was a teenage daughter, I'll, I'll just use the friend allegory because I could easily say this about my kids, but I'm gonna say this. A friend of mine. Um, when her daughter would come to her and say, look, I'm having, a, having problems with, how do I navigate this crazy world of boyfriends and dating? And here's a guy that I'm kind of interested in, but I'm not sure if he's the one that I want to really connect, you know, get involved with. And, and then the mom would say, like, oh, well, here's, um, here's what you do, or here's some advice, or here's what I, how, how I did it when I was a teenager. Or, and eventually the daughter said, um, you know what, I don't really want your advice. <laughs> Wasn't really looking for your advice. Or all these words that you're spitting at me. What I really want from you is to listen and understand what, what I'm going through. Because I'm going to decide how I navigate this. But I'd like the feeling of some support as I take this journey. And I don't want to feel like, oh, I've got this script that I need to follow now because my mom, you know. So. But what I do need is your love to guide me along, to, to say like, I'm here for you. If a step in your dating relationship goes a little awry, I'm here, that it's gonna be okay. Be quick to listen, slow to speak. Um, and then what does that have to do with the tradition of the elders? Well, a lot of what we speak from is what we've inherited. And, and it's meaningful what we inherit, because that's all we have to go on when we enter into this world. Like, what is my family? teaching me without the words, just looking around. And here's, here's the value system I kind of feel like I'm inheriting. Um, but it needs to be uh, uh, discerned, because what are the values at the heart of that tradition that we're inheriting? So I just want to tell a little story about a guy who is now teaching at Hamilton College who served his um, adult career in the military, brigadier general, um, historian, went to Ohio State, got a PhD in, in history, was the chair of the history department um, at West Point, and taught history. Grew up in Arlington, Virginia, and then a place called Monroe, I think, Georgia, and was a Southerner, um, wanted to be an educated, Christian, fine, upstanding young man. Went to Washington and Lee College in Virginia. Um, and he describes all of that as a way of who is at the, what values are at the heart of his experience growing up. And do you know who that was? Robert E. Lee. And it, he describes his book, which I recommend to you if you're interested in, I don't know, how you change your mind about something. He wrote this book called Robert E. Lee and Me. And how it took most of his adult life to realize that as a professor of history at West Point, and West Point, he points out, has Lee Barracks, Lee Gate, Lee Road. Um, and he began to ask the question, why is the US Army 
and the central, like, spiritual soul of the United States Army honoring someone who fought against, who, who, who resigned his commission in the United States Army and um, took up arms against the United States Army. And the answer that he was given is that, well, we're trying to, you know, reconcile is a very, you know, civil war is a difficult thing and trying to bring people together. And so like, lifting up Robert E. Lee as a, um, I don't know, as he described the pinnacle of what it means to be an educated, spiritual, civil man. Um, and, and, he, and he said, but, but the, what's at the heart of the value that, that he is fighting a war, intentionally leaving you know, this oath to defend the Constitution against enemies domestic and foreign. He, he's putting that aside. So what is it, the value at the heart of that experience for Robert E. Lee? And who are we, what are the values that we're trying to live by? And so his story is very compelling because he, he was fully invested in the nobility of the Southern cause because that was the tradition of the elders that he grew up with. And I have to be quick to say that was the tradition of the elders that I grew up with in North Carolina. These were noble, it was a noble cause, it was a, was a um, well-fought, just out-resourced, that the, that the, you know, the kinfolk that died, died, you know, in a noble cause. But then it just brackets the entire question of the suffering of four million black Americans. Um, so how do we, how can we be quick to listen? What is the suffering around us? Even when the tradition of the elders may be saying to us, oh, that's not important. What's important is realizing our own nobility and our own goodness. And let's not get distracted by massive suffering. <clears throat> quick to listen, slow to speak, so that our religion can be pure, can be focused in on what is important. Psst. These are simple words. Care for orphans and for widows. The people in this ancient Israel society that have no net if the men in your life are gone, you've got nothing. No social security, no, no county office for any kind of support. So it's our job you know, to pay attention to suffering. In spite of what we might, of the messaging we might receive of Oh, people that need that kind of support are not worthy of that support. Pay attention, quick to listen, slow to speak, maybe meaning slow to provide the defensive resources to say, not my problem. Is, is that, and the, I say these things as if I'm certain about it, but these, these are questions of faith, questions of what we're doing when we say, yeah, I'm involved in religion. Religion is a complicated word, of course. But do we hear the call to be people who are quick to listen, slow to speak, interested in religion being real? Let us pray. God, you, you know our hearts. 
you know that we deep down inside want a world that is at peace with itself, where all of your children can find security and meaningful lives. We, of course, want that for ourselves and for our families and our community. So we're asking for your help. Give us your word that might live in our hearts so that we might be people who move towards your kingdom of heaven, your way of having a healed community, a beloved community. We pray in the strong faith that you're with us in that walk, that you shine your light for us. And we pray in the strong name of Jesus, who walked that way while he was among us, calls us into that path today. Amen. So let's stay seated. And um, this hymn, we're just going to do verses 1 and 3. Again, just to reflect on this theme of what are we called to do? situations that you'd like to call out in uh, remember, enjoy, or in concern, this would be a time to do that. I'd like to uh, think about my good friend Gary White, who's going through uh, treatment from Oklahoma in Rochester. Uh, uh, come out with some and what's his name again? Gary Weiss. Gary Weiss. Lord, in your mercy. My son, Gordy, was languishing in prison, having served his time, looking for a way, a situation to be released into. Mm. Hear our prayer. Yes, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Yes. For my sister-in-law, Kay, who is home in Maryland, sick. Oh, that's tough. Yes, Lord, in your mercy. Hear 
Yes. 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 Opening up the parsonage. Wonderful, yeah. you've done a wonderful job. Yeah. It's just wonderful. You, you don't know what you leave this. When you leave this place, you know what I leave the lesson. <laughs> Not to, not to mention being our most faithful ushers. Yeah. I mean, thanks for all you do, honestly. It's really a blessing. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. 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 I have a very good friend, Mike Williams in Rochester, New York. They found a mass. He had a few of observed yesterday. Oh, wow. Yes, that's Dw friend. Dwight. Is that a, what's his name? Mike Williams. Mike. Yes, thank you. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Um, there's a church in Rome. There are two churches, actually. I'm closest to the Presbyterian church. And the tornado that blasted through Rome um, a month ago ripped the, ripped the roof off. Uh, there's an amazing picture uh, by some drone that you can look into that church in Rome and see the altar from the sky. So I, I think about that church as I think about our church that needs a little little uh, TLC on the roof. And what a blessing it is to have a space like this to worship in. So I'm like us to remember the folks in Rome. I know that the Episcopal Church in Rome also had major damage. So let's think about the, those uh, church unhoused people. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. 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 Yes. I'd like to give thanks for these beautiful flowers. Yes. And I am curious with Well, McLean, yeah. would you like to say what I think? Uh, yeah, they're from uh, the Reverend Farm. Avery picked them for us. And uh, yes, and McLean and Avery lovely, lovingly delivered them. Thank you. Yes. Jane. Yes. yes. Amen. Thank you for that, Jane. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. God, we, we count on you to keep us as hopeful people. We know that we are frail and mortal beings and that our time here in this place is limited. And we know how heartbreaking it is to lose friends and family or just to be separated or the many, many frailties that we endure. But we count on you to keep us hopeful that even in illnesses and difficult situations, and in joyful situations, that you're with us and that your way of love prevails in the midst of disease and war and death. So keep us in your faith, keep us hopeful people. Guide us as a church community. And as we enter into Labor Day, let us be grateful for the workers of our country and those who, who work to protect the rights of those who work. Bring us into your fullness. Make us a joyful and active church community for this island and for our world. We pray these things in the strong name of Jesus, our Lord, who taught us how to pray saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. And we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And that is the kingdom and the power. Glory, glory, hallelujah, since I lay surrounds us and the love that pours down among us, let us respond with our gifts and our hearts as we continue our worship with our offering. And our spontaneous choir is required at this time. Spontaneous. Yes, spontaneous, voluntary. You need some points? <laughs> Thank you. 
these humble gifts as a sign of our deep desire to want to do your work in this world and allow these gifts to be transformed into your light to make some healing and some joy in the people around us. We pray it in the name of Jesus our Lord. Amen. So now our tradition is to leave this holy space and to go out into that holy space. I know that's going to be difficult for a few of us, but maybe those who may not want to navigate those stairs could um, make their way kind of towards the front of the church. We'll just see how this, how this goes. Because our tradition is to, to circle around the candidi tree. And maybe the old, you know, the old faithful tree. Um, and then we'll sing our final hymn together, Blessed Be the Tide of Us. So let's see how this works. So, uh, Dale, why don't you lead us on out? <laughs> 